How's it going everybody? In this video, I'm just gonna be discussing the uh, implications of the September 1st, 2020 deadline in SB 118 and the implications it has for the Franklin Armory Title I and also other firearms here in the state of California. But before we jump into this video, if you think that the California Department of Justice should be abolished, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I wanna give a big shout out to one of the main sponsors of the channel and that is Franklin Armory. Franklin Armory, which we're gonna be talking about the Title I in this video, uh, Franklin Armory is a sponsor of this channel. They've really shown a lot of support to me and what I do here. They don't obligate me to make any videos about their products, about the Title I or any other things that they sell out on the market. They just believe in what we're doing here on this channel and spreading the word about California gun rights. So they supported this channel. So go over to Franklin Armory, show them support, show them support on their social media accounts and all of that. So many of you are probably familiar if you've watched my channel a lot with SB 118. This was a bill which was signed by Gavin Newsom and the intent of this and what the AG put forward saying that the intent, intent of this bill was was to close a loophole in the assault weapons language here in the state of California. I mean, you're probably familiar, we have various statutory sections that define various rifles and firearms as assault weapons. Those statues with the prior language had varying definitions of what California deemed to be an assault weapon. Now, through SB 118 or the predecessor, which was also AB 88, which was shut down, but then they just pretty much copy and pasted over to SB 118. And so what SB 118 did is it expanded on the definition of what California deems as assault weapons. And specifically, they targeted the Franklin Armory Title I or other firearms. And these other firearms are firearms that are not classified as a rifle, pistol, or shotgun. And as such, they don't fall under the DRO system for a uh, rifle, pistol or shotgun, um, the California Department of Justice was supposed to create another category for an other firearm, which we could then go to Franklin Armory, purchase the Title I and take possession of it. Well, the California Department of Justice pretty much put a halt on that. They dragged their feet for a long time and just waited until the California legislator passed SB 118, closing that ability for us to go out and purchase those firearms. Now, one of the major questions I've been getting about SB 118 since I put out my last video on it has to do with the September 1st, 2020 deadline. A lot of people are asking me, can they still go out and manufacture a firearm that is not classified as a rifle, pistol, or shotgun, and therefore be able to be classified as an other? And so the answer to that is, if you are trying to manufacture one of these firearms that's an other, after September 1st, 2020, you will not meet the obligation um, to be able to register that as a valid assault weapon in the state of California, and therefore you will be in unlawful possession of an assault weapon as California sees it. And I wanna read specifically some language from SB 118, and it has to do with um, the summary part, and it's number 15, and it's about the third paragraph, and it says, this bill would provide an exception to the prohibition on possession of assault weapon that is not a rifle, pistol, or shotgun if the person lawfully possessed the weapon prior to September 1st, 2020, and registers the weapon by January 1st, 2022. So pretty much when you look at that language there, it says that you had to be in possession of that firearm that is not a rifle, pistol, or shotgun prior to September 1st, 2020. So what that means is, of course, none of us were in lawful possession of the Franklin Armory Title I because they were never able to lawfully sell it to us. Since the California Department of Justice would not uh, give us that DROZ option, Franklin Armory was never allowed to sell us to that. So of course, none of us were in lawful possession of a Franklin Armory Title I. And a lot of you are probably familiar with other videos out there where people um, prior to all this SB 118 and all this stuff coming up with the Franklin Armory Title I or California trying to close what they deemed was a loophole, people were going out purchasing an AR pistol from Franklin Armory because they offer three California compliant AR pistols and then they were manufacturing it in specific ways or modifying in specific ways to fall outside of California's definition of an assault weapon. And so when it comes to individuals who may be um, manufactured or modified a firearm prior to the September 1st, 2020 deadline, or were they in lawful possession of that firearm that then needs to be registered with the California Department of Justice by January 1st, 2022? And so my initial take when I look at this and kind of what California did with their legislation it leads me to believe that people were able to lawfully go and modify and manufacture these other firearms. They didn't have to be um, actually purchasing them from Franklin Armory Title I. And why do I say that? 
And it really just flows from the logic of why would the California state legislator or why would the California Department of Justice need SB 118 um, for the purposes of pretty much putting a halt on these types of firearms. They were already stopping the purchase of the Franklin Armory Title I, so no one was in lawful possession of those. But this language here says that theoretically people could have been in lawful possession of an other firearm prior to September 1st, 2020. So there must be other types of firearms outside of the Franklin Armory Title I, which are classified as others and you could have been lawfully in possession of. So that's just my take on it. I think that you could have lawfully manufactured one of these other firearms prior to that deadline. You didn't have to purchase one from Franklin Armory. Now, what impact does that have? Even though maybe you were um, able to lawfully be in possession of that firearm that you manufactured prior to September 1st, 2020, that does not mean then you're outside of the language. You're still going to have to register it with the California Department of Justice as an assault weapon. And as many of you are familiar, what comes with that is a lot more restrictions because if you're in possession of a firearm that California deems as an assault weapon, there are various restrictions involving like transportation, loaning, um, transferring, all that stuff comes along with a registered assault weapon in the state of California. So really the whole purpose of the other firearm or the Franklin Title I was to get around all the added restrictions that we had on assault weapons or even just featureless or fixed mag builds here in the state of California. Now, what I also wanna mention though, is that we do have varying lawsuits going against the California Department of Justice. Franklin Armory has their own individual lawsuit. And then there's also a class action lawsuit going on against the California Department of Justice on behalf of us, the consumers. So when this kind of plays out, what you might actually see is that, let's say the class action lawsuit goes in our favor, what then could theoretically happen is that a judge would say that it was wrongful for the state of California and the California Department of Justice to prohibit us from taking possession of the Franklin Armory Title I and also prohibiting the drop down menu for others. And that might open the floodgates for people being able to technically be in lawful possession of those types of firearms prior to the September 1st, 2020 deadline because we were prohibited from being able to do so by the actions of the state of California. But that's really all speculation. We don't really know what form these lawsuits are gonna take and really how the disposition is going to be and what the judges are ruled. This is just purely speculation, but there is potential avenues for that September 1st, 2020 deadline to be reopened or maybe even for that January 1st, 2022 deadline to be pushed out or stopped. There's a lot of potential because of the lawsuits, but really right now, you just have to look at what is the language that we're living under currently? What does it say? And the current language says that you had to be in lawful possession of an other firearm that's not classified as a rifle, pistol, or shotgun prior to September 1st, 2020, and that you have to register that firearm that you're in lawful possession of by January 1st, 2022 as a actual assault weapon. And so one of the reasons I'm putting this video out has to do with a lot of people still asking me, can they go and modify or configure um, specific firearms in specific ways to try to deem it as an other. But pretty much if you're doing that after the September 1st, 2020 deadline, technically you are not complying with the language. Now I'm not your uh, parent. I'm not gonna tell you what you can or can't do. I'm just gonna tell you what the language says. And the language says you had to be in possession of that firearm prior to that deadline. So of course, if you're modifying or manufacturing it now, you're not in possession of it before that deadline. So if you like this video and you like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is join the Patreon page and I'll put a link to the Patreon page down in the details. Also just like, commenting, subscribing and make sure you hit the notification bell because that helps the channel analytics, helps us spread the word about the second amendment and helps us spread the word about what we deal with here in the state of California. Also just sharing the video really helps the analytics because of course YouTube doesn't like the second amendment. They don't like us talking about the second amendment or firearms or other things like that. So when you share the video, it helps kind of reach beyond what the YouTube algorithm will allow this video to reach. So as always, thanks you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.